Hey there YouTube friends, Mass Bandit here with another episode of Surfside Pleasure Pier. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, I always do appreciate it. And I know I just say that every episode, and I'm going to mention it again at the end of the episode, but I really do appreciate it, like, I, I, I really do. <laughs> I don't know, I just really like you, but I, I love that you enjoy these videos, and I love that I get to make them for you, and I, I just, I really do. I love the comments and the interaction. Um, it's great. I think it's super great. And it's all because of you guys wanting to watch my stuff. Shut up, cat. Oh my god, the cat. As soon as I start talking, the cat comes in here and starts meowing at me. And I'm about ready to... Oh my god. About ready to kick it in the face. Okay, I'd never do that because it's a cat, but whatever. So what are we doing here? Well, um, the last big item on our to-do list is this, uh... The, uh, the grand ballroom. This front side here. And... This is such a far departure from the original. I did do some looking, um, and I just, it, it, what the original has is it actually has like a little part that pokes out further. Um, I, I can't really describe it all that well, but it doesn't look anything like this. But I actually like this, and it gave me a great excuse to use some of those vintage pieces that I haven't used yet. Because I don't know if you remember this, <laughs> but this was supposed to be a pack dedicated to the vintage series, and it may have strayed a bit <laughs> from that. Uh, but this is a great opportunity to use those pieces, and I really like the way it turned out, these columns and stuff. I know it's a little gaudy, but, um, I know I say that word a lot in this series, but that's kind of always been the point, hasn't it? I mean, use the, use the vintage pieces, and I think it fits. It, in a weird, kind of almost tacky way, I think it fits, so I'm happy with it. And, uh, today on the, on, on the docket is a lot of, um, a lot of checking boxes. I did try to squeeze a ride in here, and while technically I could squeeze this whatever vintage ferris wheelie thing in i decided against it um and then i just try to randomly squeeze another ride in because all of you keep saying add rides add rides add this ride add that ride add this ride. i wanted to show you there's no room to add a ride i don't know if you know this <laughs> but the planet coaster footprints the flat ride footprints are pretty large and if i want it to function which is you know it's always important is functionality uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, adding fencing around coaster supports and coaster bits and bobs. Uh, these huge area lights, these huge spotlights, um, they're just kind of sunk in halfway. I don't like that. I'll have to find some way to fix that. I guess I'll just sink them down under the pier. I don't know. They're so big. They don't, they don't fit. And then it was finally time to go ahead and actually curb or er, fence and wall the entire pier. And oh, oh, I actually noticed that um, it's not the same height as the very, very front. And that is totally a shrug bandit. We are going to live with it and uh, tough, well, tough. <laughs> We're going to live with it like that. I am not about to change um, the roof or the wall for all around the pier. That's, that's not happening. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We also... One of the other big eyesores, one of the big incompleted parts, was going ahead and finishing the queue for Stingray. And I mentioned in the last episode that anytime I have an incline or steps now, it's just going to have to be custom railings. And sure enough, there they are. This is going to be my standard go-to when I don't want to make anything real fancy. I'm just going to use these planks. I mean, they work. They work so well. And I think they work with a variety of different styles. Like, they work well with this metal fencing. They work well with a lot of the other fencing. Um, I don't I don't see any reason not to use those throughout uh, any project that needs simple, generic fencing like that. So just queuing off or uh, fencing off the rest of the queue. It's kind of up there. Like, the queue's kind of way up in the air. I don't really like it. And I... I guess I'm just so used to, I'm so unused to the nakedness of, of everything on a, like this. Like, I'm sure that in real life this is way more compact, but for Planet Coaster, I, yeah, I'm going to roll with it. Here is my bastardized attempt at a transfer track. Um, you can see it's been hanging out there naked for forever. We decide, I decide to finally try and do something with it. And, um... Don't, don't anticipate 100% perfect, 
perfection as far as realistic. I want you to look at it, know what it is, and say, yeah, okay. I don't want you, like, okay, the, the general public. I want the general public to look at it, say, oh, yeah, okay, that's a, I get what that is, and move on. Because um, that's more in line with what I do. I am not the be-all, end-all coaster guru, especially when it comes to coasters. Um, I give you the general vibe of what it's supposed to be. Like, it's clear that's a transfer track. It kind of looks like it could function, and that's good. That's that's my, that's the level I'm looking to attain, is it kind of looks like it could function, because I really, I don't find researching every nut and bolt of every coaster interesting at all. I find that boring. I, I'm not into it at all. Like, <laughs> on my own, on, on Bro Nation, there's a whole server, there's a whole chat dedicated to theme park chat, and, and, and I just, I just don't care. <laughs> like, occasionally there's some interesting conversations, but when we're talking about coasters and all the nitty gritty specifics, I just, I don't care. <laughs> I never realized how little I care. And, and that sounds awful, but my vibe is in the general park feeling, how the park is laid out and all that stuff. And I think that actually shows a lot in my build. Um, I think my layouts are one of my strong points, normally, normally. Uh, here though, let's get back on task, I suppose. Here we're working on some custom lamp posts, and my God, if those aren't just obnoxiously huge. Um, I actually can't believe I, I, I stuck with this idea for as long as I did. Um, oh my gosh, I think I actually roll with it, but not in this quad. This, I don't know, like, these aren't cutting it for me. I don't like, I can't believe I did. I did stick with these, didn't I? The more I dress them up, the better they look. Oh, I know what's so awkward about them. The lamp post on top. Once I took that lamp, once I took the actual bulb off the top, beefed it up a little bit, it didn't feel so bad. And then I, I also realized that four of them was might have been a bit overkill. Oh, and it was the post in the middle. The post in the middle is so thin that it throws off the balance. It's too top heavy. There, luckily for me, <laughs> there's a wonderful vintage post that came and, and I really, it worked perfectly for the task at hand here. We also ended up removing the bauble, which is, I think, fantastic. And uh, so then it was, okay, th I finally settled on something that didn't look like ass. So <laughs> <laughs> so see, I will, I will, I will spend way more time making a lamp that doesn't look like garbage rather than a transfer track. Like that's where my priorities lie, and I'm sorry if that offends you as a coaster person. Um, yeah, that's I'm I'm about the park and the vibe, and it's amazing. Like it's really interesting what some people will choose to focus on. Like for example, the custom signs in this park. There are lots of people that look at that and say, mm, I don't want to do that. And I totally understand not wanting to do that. I don't know why I like to do it. I just do. And then you look at like my bro, Mike, who loves landscaping. And so he's really, really good at that. And I don't care nearly as much as he does about it. And so my landscape's not going to be as good as Mike's. And I'm okay with that. Or Gert, uh, one of the one of the big roller coaster tycoon three people, who's who's also into Planet Coaster. His real life job involves like lighting and stuff, and he's great at lighting in Planet Coaster. And you know who's not? This guy right here. In fact, we're going to be jumping into some lighting pretty soon in this episode, and uh, it's um, it's there. <laughs> I make uh, I put some lights in, and some things get lit up. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, no, never mind. False alarm. Uh, I decided to go ahead and just use the in-game fencing for those flat rides. Uh, in the last episode, in the previous walkthrough episode, there was the part where I said, oh, we need to fence this off. And rather than spend the time and the pieces to do it, I just decided to use the default ones. Uh, it works for me. I'm fine. Uh, someone mentioned we needed a ticket booth back here, and so I threw one in. I might go ahead and, and throw one in the way back as well. That might work so we can have four of them. I do still need to squeeze another bathroom in. At the very least, like, I'm curious, could I make something that looks kind of like a, uh, an out, like a porta potty? That'd be cool. I don't think I can do that though. I think the in-game restrooms are too big. So, uh, adding some security guards, and I want them to stand there. Like in Conifer Slopes, I have them guarding the front gate, and they just stand there. The problem here is that the um, the building that is the quote front gate is um, much bigger than just the gate. So they kind of walk around, and then they end up getting stuck. The staff in this game is so stupid. Like, I'm sorry, I hate ragging on things that are bad with Planet Coaster because, I mean, I've gotten so much joy and so much from this game um, as far as community and all that. But 
My god, the staff is stupid. You're gonna see, there's a real-time portion at the uh, end of this time-lapse in just a few minutes, and ugh, it's gross. The staff is so gross, I can't stand them. They, they just bunch up and they get stuck in stupid places. So anyway, we are working here on a entrance to the entrance, I suppose. One of the things I notice in Galveston is they have this fence here to block anybody from actually walking up onto the pier when it's not operating hours. And I thought that'd be really good. And then I thought, since this is supposed to be kind of historic, that would probably not have been there originally. And so we have to make one, like kind of retrofit it. And then I thought, well, let's just make it really tacky and ugly. Since there's no really good way to make it elegant, let's go for it. Let's go for gusto and let's make it kind of gross looking. And that's what I did. And it kind of looks gross, but that was kind of my intention. So... It's pretty bare bones. It just, and that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be a thing that you lock up at the end of the night and you open it up in the morning and that's it. It doesn't really serve any other purpose rather than to keep people out. And and so we add just the barest minimum of details here. And and I, I actually almost kind of like how it destroys the entrance view. I, that's what you, I would assume that's what it would be. Like... Like, a pier isn't going to be concerned with sight lines and concerned with that stuff. It's going to be, let's make profit and let's be, let's be as, I guess, as safe as we can. You know, it's just profit, profit, profit. So, in an effort to, to clutter up this area, uh, I kind of, again, I ripped off of Galveston. And they have this whole entrance here where you go and you buy your tickets. And then later on, you go ahead and uh, you... Um, they help you put your wristband on, so it's kind of like a one way in, one way out. So uh, yeah, that's kind of what I did there. Now we are jumping into the lighting portion, as you can see. Um, I'm amazed at how dark this pier is, even with all the lights we're putting in. Like I want all the lights to, all the rides to glow, but then I end up with the pier just being completely dark, and and I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, I don't want to just sink random area lights in. That might be what I have to do. Uh, but that seems kind of like cheating. So if you have some ideas for lighting, what you think, um, in your experience, what works for you, go ahead and throw them in the comments. What works for you for lighting? And uh, I'll take a look at all those and try to respond to as many as I can. And maybe we'll make some tweaks. So, yeah, uh, like I said, after this little chunk of lighting, there's going to be a real-time portion. Um, some of the parts, some of the additions I made didn't make it into the time lapse, and I'm actually kind of sort of proud of them. So I'd like to show them off to you. So that'll be coming up in a few minutes, as well as talking a little bit about the end of this series, um, because this is the penultimate measure, which is a fancy way of saying the second to last episode. Um, I've decided, I, and I don't care how long it takes me to get that final episode out, this is going to be the last episode, this is the second to last episode. Uh, that, that last episode might take a little while to come out as I shore everything up, but, um, and there might be some parts that are just kind of done but not perfected but i want to be real with you i'm kind of done with this pier i want to be done with it and i want to move on to other things but i'll talk a little bit more about that in the real time portion so for now uh just we've got just a few seconds left of time lapse we're adding some more lighting in trying to light up all these cues and i love these floodlights but i wish they dispersed their light a little bit better um, not so harshly in a round, you know, thing. Adding some blue lights to make the whole... I want I want this flume to glow. So with that being said, um, this is about the end. Let us just relax and I will see you uh, for the real-time portion, which will begin in just a few seconds. All right, so here we are for the real portion, or the real time portion, after we've added some things from the time lapse. I just thought I'd give you a look around at what we've added a bit up close and personal. So we have our entrance area here now with this ugly, tacky welcome sign with the gate so that nobody can trespass when it's off season. And uh, you'll notice it stops here, but I'm okay with that because if you hop off here, the chances of you being able to climb up there are probably pretty slim. So I'm okay with that. We'll dress this up just a little bit before we release it. And same thing here, we'll add the railings that we need to add and all that stuff to make it look a little better. It's still wide open here, um, but you know what, that's 
something we're probably just going to live with. I'm okay with that at this point. I do want to draw your attention, though, to over here. Oh, what's that? I tried my hand at some really, really simple, uh, like, billboard type things. I'm not really good at them, but I kind of like this. I think it's good. I think it's going to be, I think it helps sell um, the pure vibe a bit more. And, and while that's cool, and I've got another one here. I've got a couple different variations. They're really all quite simple. What I really love is you can start to see here, as I zoom in, you can see I've got these, the custom lights ended up working quite well with the screens here. And now I have like a little logo. Like you can see, we've got this little like wave looking pattern here for Surfside. I really like the way that looks. I think that's really, really cool. And then as you walk down the pier, you'll see different some of the different uh, options, some of the different versions that I have. I only have three, so it's not like there's a ton. But I just wanted to show these off because I am fairly proud of them, even though they're incredibly simple and they're not all that spectacular. But I think they really help push the realism factor up uh, a few notches. So, of course, then you get seven janitors all clustered together and the, your reality goes right out the window. So. Uh, popcorn cart might be a little close to the splashdown here. Let's check that out. <laughs> let's see. We got anybody coming over to the edge here soon? Yeah, we do. All right, let's just hang out here and watch the, the splash. I want to see if the popcorn cart is safe. Here we go. Oh, yeah, popcorn cart's fine. Never mind. And over here, we got a couple more of those little banners. You can see a little Surfside signs. And, uh... I think that really does help. I think that just that little bit here with the paths and the benches really adds a quite a bit of clutter to the area and really helps sell it. And then you get four more janitors all clustered together. <laughs> you sent five. Are you sensing a theme here? I don't like, I don't understand why the staff insists on clustering together like that. It's ridiculous. But anyway, that's about it. I might throw a few more around like in the back here. Like, I might go ahead and throw a few around. I love this area. This is my favorite area. It's so compact. And then I did add another ticket booth here. Of course, the person quit. But I added another ticket booth here to the comet sign. And I actually like the way that makes the comet sign not stick out so much. Helps make the area a little bit more narrow. You can see Stingray poking out. Ah, oh, dude, I do love it. It's starting to really feel like something now. So I'm pretty happy with it. And then you'll come over here and we'll get an up-close look of what happened with the uh, with the grand ballroom. I think the entrance turned out pretty good. And this is supposed to be like a little plaque thing. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hating this. And we got a little staff entrance like right there. So we can get the staff in there. We'll put a sign. It's a little no entrance sign. But yeah, just a little bit better view of, of, the, uh, of the actual building. So... Digging it, and back here, actually, I'm gonna just jump out of Tejid Cam. I'm gonna break the, uh, you know, the, the the vibe here. Let's let's fly back, and oh, I hope I downloaded the. I hope I ripped these out of pine wood. I might not have. Let me see. I think I did. John T gave me approval. Yeah, I see him. John T gave me approval. He said I could go ahead and use his awesome binoculars that he has in. Um, Oh my, look at how huge that is. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to edit these. <laughs> we're going to edit this. We're going to get rid of that. Because I can deal with the rest of it. How big is that? Yeah, I do that. That's quite a bit, but there we go. I might just have, we might just have to live. Oh, it doesn't stick out that much at all. That'll be just fine. So just so we can have a bit of, oh, they're kind of short now, aren't they? Air. There we go. That'll be good. Oh, I like those a lot. I think those fit really nice. These are Jaunties. Um, I stole them off of the version of Pinewood, Pinewood Hills that I worked on. He gave me permission. Don't worry. He said I could. He totally said I could do it. I promise. You can ask him. He'll probably comment on this video and tell me tell you that I'm lying or something, because he likes to do that. Jaunty likes to. Jaunty likes to play. Jaunty's got himself some jokes. But look at that. Doesn't that just add so much to this back area here? And we might, we can't really throw any over there, can we? I just, I love it. You can go and you can just check it out. Ah, oh, look at that, I love it. You can check out that awesome wall of terrain. Shh, 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 shh. We're pretending that doesn't exist, remember? <laughs> 
So yeah, gotta add a cash register still. So there's still some more details to add, um, but I think we're about 90% of the way there. I don't think we're gonna add a cover here. We're gonna let these people burn. Uh, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna close this off. My initial thought was I was going to um, go ahead and uh, my initial thought was that I was going to add some overflow, but ah, forget that. We're not gonna do that. And this is all shaping up quite nice here. We gotta put some fencing in along here. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do that live just because we're here. Kind of like what we do when we play Parkitect. We, we do watch some time lapse and then you do get a little bit of real time playing just so you can see just how slow <laughs> I am. <laughs> how slow and terrible I am at everything. So darken, well, let's make this a, a white. No, let's make this um, teal to go with the um, the color of the actual coaster, I think that'll be good. There we go, so we're gonna go ahead and plop this down. And I'm being really kind of not picky with it, and I'm okay with it. Usually I'm, I'm, I'm very particular, but this time, eh, not so much. Let's go ahead and use a two meter. Uh, is it two? Yeah, two. Yeah, we're just gonna kind of fudge it here. There we go. We'll go back to the four meter now and we'll rotate it. Usually I use uh, advanced move almost exclusively, but in this particular instance, I'm okay with not using advanced, as he pulls up advanced move. I'm okay with not using it, he says as he uses it. Don't want to hear it from anybody in the comments. I don't want to hear it from you. <laughs> we'll move all these back a little bit. Move all y'all back. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know what this is connected to. This must be connected to the pier now. There we go. There we go. Yeah, just that little bit of fencing will help make it look a little bit more legitimate. Don't want anybody crawling around in the supports of a coaster. That's a bad idea. If you crawl around in the supports of the coaster, you're gonna have a bad time. So that's what I'm going to continue to do here as uh, I end up, as I end the episode. And uh, you can expect the episode 20 to be the final. Now, I do want to tell you that may mean that it's going to take a little bit longer to get out. You'll notice that um, Planet Coaster and all that has kind of slowed on the channel. Uh, the first week of work has totally kicked my, my rumpus. I told you that... Uh, full-time daily videos was probably not going to happen and a video didn't come out yesterday uh, so yeah I'm, I'm just I'm just happy we got one out um, today so be on the lookout for the final episode of Surfside I'd, I'd say maybe in a week hopefully not longer than that I really would like to not go a whole week without uh, an episode so but I can't promise anything so maybe it'll happen maybe it won't I don't really know but um, just be on the lookout and the next episode will most likely be the last one because uh, I'm kind of ready to be done with this project now. It's been a ton of fun and the support has just been outstanding. I've been so pleased with the support. Here's an overview. I'm not sure I've never done that before. So here's an overview of where most things are located. You can see it's a lot bigger than it looks, I think. So um, thank you for all the support, and in that final episode, you'll see the final time lapse, and we'll do an extra long um, cinematic at the end, and then you can expect a bunch of POVs individually as they uh, as I release the blueprints, and then you can expect also, hopefully Mike and I will do a bro trip of this at some point. So um, yeah, there's still more Surfside, even though the official series will close uh, on the next episode. So thanks so much for watching. I always do appreciate it. I know I mentioned that in the video, and it kind of sounds like I'm just rambling through, but I really do appreciate you watching and commenting and supporting, and, and it means a lot, and, and it makes me want to get in and make more videos for everyone. So thanks so much for that support. Um, have yourself a great day, great night, great whatever, and I will see you for the next episode of Surfside, the last episode. Oh, of Surfside Pleasure Beer. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.